Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala nabiyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Video kisah mualaf kali ini datang dari negara Australia. Seorang pria asal Australia menceritakan bagaimana awal mulanya dia mendapatkan hidayah Islam. Kisah mualaf kali ini dari seorang pria yang bernama Idris Latera. Dalam video kali ini beliau menceritakan banyak hal tentang perjalanan hidupnya menuju hidayah menuju hidayah Islam setelah menempuh penelitian yang sangat panjang selama 15 tahun meneliti agama-agama dan alhamdulillah mendapatkan hidayah dari Allah Subhanahu wa taala. Baik, mari kita saksikan video kisah malam dari Idris Latra. Berikut ini. Assalamualaikum. My name is Idris Latra. I'm an Aussie, so g'day. And uh, very proud to be of um, uh, a revert into Islam. I, uh, I was originally raised a Catholic. I'm from a European family. My, my parents are mixed Italian and Norwegian. And uh, I went to a Catholic school and uh, had all the trimmings of a Catholic education, did my first communion. And I actually thought about being a priest at one point, but that was probably a silly thought <laughs> that lasted a couple of weeks. Um, but uh, my journey into Islam, uh, I guess, uh, took a long time. I say that because I searched for God for about 15 years. Um, I came to a decision in my life that uh, for me, the Catholic faith had some holes and some gaps and things that just didn't make sense. And so I spent about 15 years uh, searching for God. Um, I believed that God existed. Um, and for me at that time, I believed the Bible was correct and accurate. And so I spent my time, years, um, researching the Bible, doing Bible study, visiting different churches, visiting different communities. And I was always going back to the Bible as a reference to try and find, uh, for me, what was authentic religion. And I guess for me, the more I read the Bible, the more I saw its holes, its potholes, uh, the gaps, the things that just didn't make sense for me. Um, I eventually got to the point that I realized that I, I just couldn't find this authentic Christianity. Um, I still believed in God and uh, I guess I was very confused, uh, but at the same time uh, knew that God existed and, and um, I'm lucky to have always had that, uh, that feeling in me. I think uh, I come from a spiritual family, um, although me and my, my mum, my sister specifically, we have different spiritual paths, um, we've always been interested in spirituality and, and religion. Um, I, I work in the health industry and uh, for me science is something which uh, is an important part of uh, discovering the universe and how you fit in the universe and uh, uh, when lo things logically don't make sense for me I often dismiss them. So then uh, my introduction to Islam was not logical and it uh, definitely wasn't uh, intellectual either. Um, it took me by surprise. In fact I never had any interest in, in Islam at all. I thought that Muslims were grumpy Arabs um, <laughs> and uh, I never had any Muslim friends, I'd never been to a mosque, I had no association or understanding about Islam at all and uh, to be perfectly honest I had absolutely no interest at all. Over time, uh, going back to uh, my, my biblical uh, quest, I guess you could say, my, my search for truth, um, one thing that I became interested in was um, how the Abraham, Abrahamic, Abrahamic religions fitted into um, uh, you know, the world. You know, we have uh, Judaism and Christianity. And one of the, the fascinating things now that I, that I laugh at is that uh, I never believed or understood that Islam was part of that Abrahamic family. Um, so my conversion to Islam was not uh, logical or intellectual. In fact, uh, I was in Singapore as a tourist. I was there for a seminar 
Uh, I was looking around like a, a typical tourist in the city and I came across a mosque for the first time. And it's the first time in my life I've ever stood in front of a mosque. Uh, I guess I've seen photos of them before, maybe in movies and stuff, but this is the first time I had seen one uh, up close. And it was beautiful, the big Sultan Mosque in, uh, in Singapore City, uh, bright and colourful. And I remember noticing how different it felt compared to a church. Um, for those of you who have been to churches, they're often dark dark and gloomy and cold and I thought I just had this feeling that the mosque was bright and colorful and it seemed almost inviting um, anyway like a typical silly tourist I was taking some selfies and some photos in front of the mosque and then all of a sudden out of nowhere I heard the Azan the Islamic call to prayer and um, uh, <laughs> it brought me to tears um, I uh, I'd never heard it before. I didn't even know what the words were, but um, still to this day, uh, and still in fact even now, I think about it. Um, there's something beautiful about that call to prayer. Uh, it's an invitation from God to come and worship Him. Um, so um, that was the introduction for me to Islam. Uh, I was fortunate that I was with a couple of local Singaporeans who turned out to be Muslim. Uh, I had no idea that they were Muslims actually. And uh, they noticed how I'd been touched by hearing the Azan. And um, I went, uh, they offered to take me inside the mosque and to have a look. So I went inside and uh, I'm looking around and I noticed just the complete contrast to what I was used to as a Catholic. No crosses, no statues, no candles. Uh, it wasn't dark, it was filled with light, it was colourful, and there were all these brothers coming in, lining up in really super straight lines, ready for prayer. And it was a beautiful experience. Um, uh, I was with uh, a brother who invited me to join them in prayer. Uh, I had no idea, <laughs> no idea what I was doing, uh, but I just lined up and he said, just copy me. I said, okay. And uh, I just noticed that um, there were people of all sorts of shapes and colors and sizes, black, brown, white, yellow, um, chubby, skinny, fat, tall, skinny, short, everything. Um, and they were lined up together in these perfectly straight lines as, as a brotherhood. And, um, and then of course the, the Imam, the Sheikh, uh, began to recite the Quran. And uh, it was just such a beautiful experience for me uh, to feel um, the, uh, I guess the, the humbleness of, of the way that Muslims pray. It's such a humbling experience to put your head down and prostrate on the ground, something I've never done before. And I remember thinking to myself that if you were brought up on an island and you had never had any interaction with other humans before, and you saw Muslims pray, you would know instinctively that they were worshipping God. Um, so, uh, I, I, and I, again, I remember feeling emotional as I uh, stood there uh, with Muslim brothers on either side of me, uh, listening to the Quran being recited. I had absolutely no idea what they were saying, but it touched my heart. And from there, I met a couple of sheikhs in Singapore and here in Perth. And uh, I think that's when the intellectual part started to kick in. I had all these questions about who is God. I had my own definition of who I thought God was. and. Um, you know, comparing it to Christians and all of the different Christian congregations and churches, uh, comparing it to the Bible and saying that, uh, as I felt, there are no Christians that actually practice um, uh, the message of what Jesus taught. Uh, the more I learned about Islam, uh, the more it just clicked and clicked and clicked and clicked and I realized uh, this is what I've been searching for. It's an answer to my, my intellectual curiosity about who is God, uh, who is his authentic or what is his authentic religion and at the same time um, a peacefulness in fact uh, you know if you look at the word Islam and you take the eye away it's salam which is peace um, uh, I've been sh just amazed by how uh, me as a person I've changed um, I'm a lot calmer and happier and, and I guess I feel a lot more at peace because I have uh, peace in my life um, uh, there is a certain structure and there are certain uh, cultural things that you go through changing when you become a Muslim, um, such as the five daily prayers, uh, making ablution, making wudu, um, all these sorts of things, fasting, um, giving charity, but uh, they're beautiful things and uh, I found them to be a, a big blessing in my life.
Um, so if you're searching for the truth, uh, open your heart and your mind and I, I give you an invitation to uh, read the Quran, meet with some brothers, visit a mosque, learn how we pray and uh, inshallah uh, Allah will guide you in, in his uh, straight path. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Demikian tadi kisah mu'alaf Idris Latera, seorang pria asal Australia. Semoga bisa kita ambil banyak hikmah dari apa yang beliau ceritakan. Dan mudah-mudahan video kali ini memberikan banyak manfaat untuk kita semuanya. Sampai jumpa pada video yang akan datang. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.